We're live. Okay. Yes. Hello, Hello from Italy. Um, yeah, let's just hang out for a couple minutes and we'll wait till the uh, turn of the hour and Give get this uh, to get on. video started. But let us know where you're checking in from and how you're doing today. You yeah, know, and if you have nice questions, Sunday. be sure to put them in the comments. And we'll talk a little bit, give you an update, show yeah. you around the bed and breakfast at our Airbnb, and then we'll answer your questions at the end. So be sure to put questions over there. Yep. Hello from Texas. Yeah. Yes. yes. Welcome. So I think we're one minute away. One minute away. Good to see everybody. Yeah. Hello from Michigan, San Antonio. Nice. We've got two Texans. Georgiana, David. At work, so can't see this till later. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning, Thanks, Christina. John. We got Lucy here. Off. Thank you. She's we been doing guys too. wonderful. Okay. It's okay, little one. Are you camera shy okay. today? Okay. Let's go this way. There we go. There's. Here's Lucy. Yeah. Come on. Look at them. I'm yeah. sure you're not going to grasp it, but. Hey, we got Diego from Costa Rica. Oh, nice. Welcome. Hello from, oh, the UK. Yeah. Nice. Phoenix. We have missed making Minnesota. videos as well. We have. But life was just so all consuming <laughs> during the renovation project and helping family members this summer. And then the preparations for getting ready. It was just mind blowing. And exactly. there's just nothing left to give at the end of the day. I know. Okay, my clock just turned five o'clock okay. Italy time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're having a cyclone in, on the West Coast. Did you read about that? Yeah, I saw a headline. You guys stay dry out yeah. there. I'm glad we missed that. Hello from Wasilla, close to home. <laughs> Yay. Okay, so just to make this a little bit more of an efficient video, if you have questions, just put them down in that chat window and we'll answer them at the end. But let's just jump right in with a little bit of an update about, well, what we've been doing. So the last <laughs> live stream was from Albuquerque. Albuquerque. And then we proceeded to uh, go to Kansas to visit Rebecca's dad. And we made this round of visiting all our parents before we left For the country, reasons. Uh, obvious reasons, and had a good time with uh, Steve on the farm. Mm -hmm. Then made a push to Tennessee and rested up for a few days at a thousand mm -hmm. trails there. Mostly we worked on getting everything that had to be booked yeah. for this trip booked. Cause yeah. we, we went somewhere where we had really good internet and it was out in the middle of nowhere, but we surprisingly had good internet and just like rested, worked on the computer. I booked a ton of stuff for this trip. We got our insurance in place for it. All the things that had to happen, but we put things couldn't into motion. happen until we were sure we were going. Yeah. And from there, it was a matter of, okay, all this stuff is put into motion. Now let's see if we can get it to fall into place. <laughs> like, uh, which so, was very nerve wracking. We weren't sure if this was going to work. <laughs> yeah. So in Tennessee, we met up with Rebecca's mom, who full times in a uh, Tiffin motor home and she was an amazing asset to uh, helping this happen. All our fit parents All and our so parents many of our friends have just been way. so helpful in making this happen. We love you and we could not have done this without your support. Yeah. But yeah, we met up with mom and took a, about two days to get to Maryland where we went to a family friend's house that we haven't met. It was your mom's, no, mom's friends, friends, and they were kind they, enough to... They only lived like 60 miles from the Port of Baltimore, yep. so very convenient. And Port of Baltimore. Well, we used a company called IBSS, uh, and his name's Martin McGowan, He's amazing. for our shipping agent. You don't go contacting the boat itself. You have to go through this agent, and they take care of all the stuff, but... He came highly recommended. We were initially thinking we might ship out of Galveston, uh, but Martin just kept saying, like, you know, if you can do Baltimore, do Baltimore. I asked like seven ways this Sunday. Could we please do well, Galveston? Are you sure we can't do Galveston? Could we possibly do Galveston? Because it's just they, gonna be a lot easier for us. And he just kept saying Baltimore. You so should do Baltimore. They have a reputation for losing keys. <laughs> Uh, the More incidences theft. of theft, and if something goes wrong, there's no uh, there's, boats. there's fewer like, boats that go through Galveston, whereas Baltimore, it seemed like there was at least two a week. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, so if one boat like had a breakdown in Costa Rica and didn't make it to Galveston, schedule. then there wasn't another one for three weeks. But in Baltimore, if something happened in Georgia where they were stopped, well, then they had another boat three days later. Yep. And so you had a lot better backup. But we uh, stayed with some friends, mm -hmm. uh, family friends on the eastern shore of Maryland, and it was nice. It was the perfect location and such a great little town because we were able to get so many things done. Danny got new tires. And yeah, the windshield. The windshield's taken a beating over the years. It wasn't and horrible. And that was something Martin he yes. was like, you better replace that before you I ship. Because you're going to have problems in Europe. And I hate to say it, but there does seem to be a little bit more in the way of wound bureaucracy. and bureaucracy and overreach here. Mm -hmm. And he said, just replace that windshield. Yeah. So, it was $260 well spent, we hope, because it would be less reason for anybody to stop us once we're on the road here. Exactly. And then tires, we just knew were cheaper in the States, and we were really close to the end of our yeah. life on the ones we had, so we just decided... Well, and oil is... To. Gasoline is oil-related. Mm -hmm. So tires are oil-related. Gas is expensive here, and diesel more expensive than uh, in the States. So we figured tires have to be more yeah. expensive. And it was good just to start the trip fresh. Yep. Lucy also saw the vet in Easton. <laughs> so um, I called like eight different places and talked to uh, places that our friends recommended. And I also called a handful of others because I didn't want to just rely on one or two. And um, so we worked with Midshore Vet in Easton. And they actually do a lot of these international um, USDA. USDA documents, endorsements for dogs to, and cats to travel. And they're so close to Baltimore. They're really easy. It's a great place to go to. Um, but they were fabulous. And so Lucy went on a Tuesday. They make you do it 10 days yeah. before you fly. So talk about stressful because you have to go in and get the vet exam. And then you have all this paperwork that they've filled out ahead of time. They ask you all for all kinds of information. You have to provide rabies and microchips and um, all of our vaccine documentation. And the microchip has to go in before the rabies shot could be given. Which we did that in Mexico yeah. with Lucy. Yeah. And Lucy's doing great. By she the way. is. She's fabulous. Wonderful. <laughs> Um, but we gave them all this paperwork ahead of time. Then when we went in, they did the exam for Lucy, which I thought it'd be like more than it was, but all they did was listen to her heart and lungs. Um, our vet in Mexico had told us she would be due for a heartworm test this fall. So they did that. And then they did an OMP on her stools just because they said they do them once a year. And I was like, okay, well go ahead then. But it wasn't required to come to Italy. And then they said, okay, well, we're going to ship this all off to Albany. Um, they they do an electronic crazy. submission. Yeah. And then you pay for overnight shipping back via FedEx. And on Friday, I got a call that all of her paperwork was in, which she's like, that was really fast. I expected it to be Monday or Tuesday. But um, came back in a heartbeat, and she was all set to go to Europe and healthy as a horse. Mm -hmm. And So that – we were, I was really nervous. And the process part. cost roughly? Um, so including the stool and the heartworm, which was extra, the whole thing was 416 So if we hadn't done that, it would have been $100 less. I know that's going to be a question that's yeah. asked. Yeah, it is. So the truck portion was not just windshield and tires. <laughs> we had to go through every single thing on the truck. And it wasn't necessarily customs. Hey, Lucy, I'll roll your ball for you. Um, <laughs> wasn't necessarily customs, it was uh, the shipping company had more rules than we far anticipated. Lithium batteries, no canned food foods. at all. Even canned yeah. foods, like our little salsa jars from Mexico. Spices. And all of our spices had to yeah. go. I mean, like we probably threw away five, six, hundred dollars worth of food. It was awful. We gave mom we what gave we could. Now, like we gave avocado away as much oil. As we could. But now we're going to have to, when the truck arrives, pretty much start from scratch, which we have kind of yeah, we got started all from oil scratch and here. And and vinegar. And <laughs> we're on our way. I uh, had to go through everything in the back of the compartment. Like I had to get rid of an extra gallon of oil that I carry with us yeah. just because I yeah, carry an extra gallon of oil. Anything flammable. Yeah, brake clean, in the car, in the silicone spray. It was unbelievable, the list, yep. guys. It took us 
I mean, I kind of expected it to take a day to get the truck ready from that point, you know? And instead, we spent three days getting that thing ready, emptying all the stuff out, Keep going through everything. And emptying it out again. Like, how many times did we go through the garage stuff? At least three times, everything got taken out of the garage and put away, some put stuff put pulled in. Pulled out. A bunch of Amazon insane. orders came yeah. in. We got this uh, transformer box uh, that converts the current from. 110, 110 to two, yeah, and for the for the truck as a whole, so we can plug the truck in okay. when it is needed to plug the truck in. Which, unless it's really hot, that air conditioner or really cold or not really cold, babe. but dark, like dark because you know winter time we go somewhere where it's cold and dark. Yeah, true. Like uh, on the Alaska Highway when the sun is so low on the horizon, but we're not going to be doing that damn dro drive. Uh, not for, a, Not while, for a, very, really long while. a very long time. Uh, so then like the water tank had to be emptied out. The fuel tanks had to be down to like a quarter mm -hmm. of a tank. And then we were told like, we need to go pick up some documents at the port. We, so like, okay, this is good. You know, let's make sure the tires are all balanced. We took a run into Baltimore to find out really we didn't need to go there because we carry a printer. Yeah. I'm not sure if most people don't have access to a printer. But well, they told us to print in color the four copies of the Docracy and four copies of our title for the truck. And so I did that on the very first day we arrived in Baltimore. And then below that on the instructions that I printed out, um, which I rarely do, but in this case, I like, I want a paper copy that I can keep looking at when I go, oh my God, did we forget something? Um, but it said to come to their address in Baltimore at the port ahead of time to pick up the paperwork. They call it a packet, a port packet. And so we're dropping off on Monday and Friday was the last business day. So we actually went on Thursday just to be safe in case, you know, like something went wrong on Friday. And when we got there, she's like, do you have your title? Which it didn't tell me I needed to bring with me. The original. The original title. Um, it said it somewhere else, but not by the address. Which is Luckily, another, we bought the wrong address. Another thing not to interrupt, but to do what we do, it's really better off if you completely own your vehicle outright. And no, don't have, have like Bank of America or your credit union on your title. Because then you'd have to get like a notarized letter from them that it's okay to get your vehicle to leave the country. Yeah. And that's a why I think a lot of people use home equity loans mm -hmm. to buy vehicles for this type of travel. So you do get the pink slip, but then the money kind of comes out of the Some equity other on your place. house. So yeah. sorry to interrupt. That's okay. Anyway, so I luckily we brought the truck because we were talking about driving my mom's car in, <laughs> but we decided we needed to get the gas tanks down a little lower. So we drove diesel tanks. Diesel tanks. So we drove the truck in. She's like, "Do you have your uh, title?" And I was like, "Um." Yes, that in the truck. So yeah. I walked back out there, brought it back in. She makes four copies of it and four copies of the dock receipt and collates them by hand and puts a paper clip on them and says, you have to give these to your escort. And she put the original title on top of it. You have to give this to your escort on Monday morning. And I'm like, that's it. I already printed this out at home. <laughs> <laughs> so we got to look, take a little tour of Baltimore. We figured out the where the port, port was. And how nasty rough the roads were. Yeah. I thought Mexico had some bad roads. The port of Baltimore, watch yeah. out. Like you will lose. Bottom out. Yeah, you'll lose a wheel in there. <laughs> uh, so then it was just a matter of wrapping up the truck mm -hmm. and dropping the truck off on Monday morning at 7.30 a.m. We booked the very first appointment of the day as recommended by both Martin and our escort. They said, you do not want to be there when the lunch break at the port starts. Or near the end of the day. Yeah, because if lunch time starts and they're not done with your paperwork yet, they'll be like, see you after lunch. And you and the escort have to stay inside the port and wait for them to come back for lunch. And it's $50 an hour that you pay the escort. And so they said, book the very first appointment of the day. So that was 7.30. So we got up at 4.30 that morning mm -hmm. and drove, I drove mom's car and Ben drove the truck so that we had a way to get back home. Mom didn't need to get up at 4.30 in the morning when the, uh -uh. the two of us. So but we moved into mom's, <laughs> yeah, moved into my mother-in-law's motorhome. <laughs> that could have been a whole video in itself, you know, she moving into your mother-in-law's motorhome. We never had time to do it. We oh, were going to make this video 
clip where we set all of our bags outside the front door of mom's and she's going to be like, yeah, they tell you if you move into an RV, your kids never move back home, but that's clearly not true. <laughs> so we stayed with her for four nights. It was right? a priceless asset having the car and a place to stay because once we turned in the camper, our home on wheels was gone. Uh-huh. And then we would have had to pay for an Airbnb or a hotel room. Plus a and, way to drive to the airport. You know, we'll get into, you know, we're not going to hide or be elusive to the numbers, but this was a very expensive endeavor. Mm-hmm. And if we could save $300 here, $500 there, it, it really did add, add up. up. It did. And even so, it was. Yeah, $15,000 to get the truck and us and all our stuff and all the things that had to be done for the truck and all the things that had to be done for us to come. How much? 15000 15, Yeah, right around there. Yeah. Um, I see all these comments over here, guys. Thank you so yeah. very much. Um, we will be getting to those. Uh, yeah, keep asking yes, questions because we we'll answer them. them at the end. Exactly. But we love Just hearing from you. Yep. Uh, so, Drop met the, the escort. 7.30 a.m., Port of Baltimore. He was not wearing a black cocktail dress like I thought. He was wearing a, a blaze orange vest, safety vest. And We kept joking that we had to be careful about saying we were paying the escort because somebody might misinterpret what we meant. And what the escort does is he has a TWIC card, which I think stands for, I used to have one running boats out of uh, Seward, Transportation Workers Identification Card, which is pretty much a safety feature so that they know Security. somebody is background checked for accessing the ports. But he was also very priceless knowledgeable. and knowledgeable about the process of dropping off vehicles. So first we went through. And, and just to clarify, you and the escort. Only I one person, in the yes. Car, we couldn't both go into the port. Yeah, whoever's name was on the dock receipt? No, or? it actually didn't matter. Oh, we it dropped didn't. it off. I thought it did. They okay. told it. I had read in a, I don't know, something that it mattered. But Martin said it actually didn't matter if both of our names were on the title. Either of us could drop it off. Yeah. Um, but we just chose for Ben to do it. So yeah, uh, he was in his car and I was following him in the truck. We went through one gate, which like gave you some printed documentation, not even a human being there. And then went through another gate, which is where the Port of Baltimore police inspected the undercarriage and took a peek inside the camper of the truck and just looked around pretty much. You know, didn't open anything. Just like, oh, it's a motorhome. I thought it was a box truck. (laughs) Then... We went to the U.S. Customs Office and met an admin person, not like an officer with a weapon and a badge, but a person in the office, and they stamped our doc receipt and title a few times. The original title got stamped for export. And then we had to drive over to another set of offices where he walked me in, and I'm not quite sure. I turned in like the doc receipt. She did something to it. Then she's like, go see that lady down there on that counter. And she did something to it. And then she said, okay, go to this building and then go see those people over there. And eventually it got to the point where they said, oh, your parking spot is S20. I don't know if that was the exact number, but (laughs) go to this spot and somebody will be out there to meet you. Um, One of our bigger fears was that we were gonna have to leave the keys to the camper, which opens yourself up to being a victim of crime. Mm -hmm. I really feel for the people who have sprinter vans or motorhomes where there's like a a wide open entrance to everything. Because apparently when the vehicles are on a ship, well, they're on ships for days upon end, sometimes, Things people, happen. things happen. People have all the time in the world to go sifting through vehicles. Uh, but in the off chance that we did have to get our cab inspected, this is where the RV lock mm-hmm. really came in handy. Oh, we yeah. gave this was a great Martin, idea. Yeah. We didn't even think about this until we were well, in until the you process. See, exactly. This was fabulous. We were very hesitant about wanting to leave the keys. And we're like, well, Martin, can we just give you the code to our RV lock? And that way, if anybody needs to get in uh, and they have to reach out to you for the code. you can make sure that they are a an official person and that emphasize that please lock this back up and then once they were inside we hung a set of keys for the garage and the, the aluminum lock boxes, boxes and the and the, and the 
fuel tanks. Because yeah. we put locking fuel caps on the Yeah, that was another thing. Gas tanks to leave. That was like $90, I think, that will be very well spent. You wanted to do it for a long time. Yeah, finally and I finally figured out that it's like a two-inch female <laughs> locking fuel cap and got them from is it AutoZone, Honestly. which is also CarQuest. And they're going to be great because one person siphons fuel out of our tanks. Uh, you know, that pays for itself. itself right there. Plus, also the factor of you pull up to a pump, and a lot of places are self or full service. You don't want the person pumping fuel to go putting diesel in your tank. Mm, I just need yes. a little bit of a control yes. for gas. I'm a little bit of a uh, control freak. I bet they don't know that. <laughs> There's been a lot of times in Mexico where Rebecca's <laughs> like, Un minuto, por favor. Ben, Mi don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Because like that would totally ruin your day in the middle of nowhere to uh, get, fuel get the wrong type of fuel. Yeah. But so the truck got dropped off. Mm -hmm. The I escort, for you. yeah, gave me a lift. The thumbnail uh, for this video was actually like the parking spot where we left Denny. And oh, also forgot to say we had to really clean out the truck. Like sweep the floors, uh, wash the truck, undercarriage, like get rid of any remnants of the dumpster highway mud that were still, still in there. The only one. I hate to say it. Yeah, look close enough, you could probably still find some dumpster highway mud. You don't have to tell me that. <laughs> but um, then we went home. We were moved into mom's motorhome for a few nights. And, and we still had an insane list of stuff to do. Like we never stopped. It was exhausting. Mm -hmm, baby. You went back up. Uh, one second. She's got a ball around here somewhere. Well, you, you keep going. Yeah, it just never stopped. I mean, you guys know we did the whole renovation this summer, and then we immediately drove clear across the country and then got everything ready to do uh, the shipment. And then we had to get us ready, you know, like pack our bags. Um, we had to go get COVID tests, which that ended up being a debacle. That was a fiasco in itself. We went and got COVID tests, <coughs> and... There was not a facility within 100 miles of us, or I'm sorry, 85 miles of us. There's one 85 miles away um, that would do a rapid um, antibody test. So like a rapid antigen test. They all did PCRs. So which are the ones that take a few days to come back? And you have this window of 72 hours to get your COVID yeah. tests. And so we went. So it's not like we waited till the last minute. No, no, we did it on Monday because it had to be seventy-two hours from when we landed in Italy, not from when we left the United States. When we landed in Italy, which knocked which off a solid eight six hours. hours. Well, eight. Yeah, I guess. Maybe yeah. a seven and a half hour flight. So, um, so anyway, we got our PCR test on Monday, <clears throat> and then. Results don't come back, and results don't come back, and results don't come back. And I was like, by Wednesday, I was hounding the lab. Like, I was talking to supervisors. I was like, can't anybody do anything? <laughs> no, they couldn't do anything. Yeah. The results didn't come back until and we were so eating a meal in the terminal the airport, past security. And it was well past the time where we had to check in for the flight, mm -hmm. or we wouldn't have made the flight. So um, my mom drove us to, to Newark where we flew out and she stayed in a hotel for the night so she didn't have to drive back in the dark. And the kid at the front desk, I called him and I'm like, please help me. Is there anywhere nearby here that'll do a rapid? I'm sure we're not the only people who've stayed in this hotel who <laughs> got to the airport without tests. <laughs> and so he gave us the name of a Walgreens. Well, they were only taking appointments. And then he called back a few minutes later with the name of MD City Urgent Care, and it was like 1.2 miles away. Mm -hmm. So we, I called, and they said they did test by walk-in, and it was a 15-minute turnaround for the results. And so the PCR energy test did the not cost. Oh, PCR the PCR test. The PCR test that we did on Eastern Shore, Maryland, was free. was free. I guess that's a government. If thing. you're traveling, it qualifies for free in the state of Maryland. Yeah. And then when we were in we're Jersey, in Newark, Newark. Um, they took our insurance cards and we don't know like how much it'll be. Yeah. They didn't know. They were like, uh, well, we'll charge your insurance and then whatever they don't pay, we'll send you a bill. So we haven't paid for the test yet. And I'm sure this is probably going to prompt another question. Health insurance. What are we doing for health insurance? Well, three years ago, we 
got uh, global health insurance because we knew we were going to be doing this. Thought we were going to do this we a lot sooner than we did. Thought we were hell of a lot freaking sooner, but so we have a Cigna International global, uh, global uh, insurance. How many countries? Uh, I don't think one seventy. I think they're. All the and it includes the expensive ones like Japan, Japan and Singapore, the, United the United States. Those were the ones that actually like bumped yeah. our <laughs> insurance up to a higher Cost. level. And what are we paying now per month, roughly? For the two of us, it's a thousand dollars a month. And that includes and vision. The, that includes vision and dental, dental repatriation of your remains, compassion visits. So if one of us gets sick, um, they'll pay in a lifetime five visits for your family to come see you. Like if you have a really bad car accident or something. They'll fly for, they'll pay for one of our parents to come out and be with us. And 1500 <laughs> per person deductibles roughly? It's 1500 for out of hospital and 1500 in hospital is our deductibles. And I chose a higher deductible to get a lower monthly rate. Um, but once we pay that 1500 or 3000, whichever ends up being each year, then we don't pay anything. From there, it's 100% coverage, and I pay a higher premium every month to get that. You can pay lower premiums, and then you have like where you pay 80, they pay 80, and you pay 20, or they pay 70, and you pay 30. But I just wanted it to be like, okay, we know we have this base amount, we always need to leave in the health savings account, and once that's paid every year, then we have insurance and it covers us for everything. And it's everywhere. Yep. And we're gonna actually, hopefully we don't have to use it, but we are hooked up now when it comes to health insurance. Yep. Uh, so we got our one hour rapid test. Yep. They came back in like 30 minutes. We caught the shuttle bus to, to the, the airport. airport, had a choked up goodbye, goodbye to, Mom my, Lisa and, and my brother came down from and New York. we got to see Berg. He came down and said goodbye. So um, that was nice because we hadn't yep. seen each other for, um, since my grandma's funeral, actually. So and then a couple times uh, in this travel process, having Lucy helped us get into a shorter line <laughs> because we had a dog. We couldn't necessarily do the whole online check in. Nope, they make you check in in person. And this is I Lucy's favorite to toy. Right now, at least. I was able to go. So we flew United Airlines, just so you know, because um, basically like doing all the research. Number one, they had a nonstop from Newark to Milan. And number two, reading all of the reviews and comments and stuff on the Animal Travelers Facebook groups. United seemed to be the company that people flew with as far as American companies went um, and had the least trouble with traveling with the dog. Yep. In cabin. So we got to go to a shorter line. <laughs> because we had a dog. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Security was rather routine. I, I picked up Lucy. Her bag went through the machine. I walked through the non- Normal scanner. Non- Yeah, not yeah, the, the old like school this. scanner. Uh, Back through the regular one, and that a funny story is for the <laughs> first time in years, your bra didn't set off the underwire because you're not- I don't these, wear underwire anymore. Got, Rebecca sells these amazing bras with no underwire. <laughs> <laughs> so I, it's always a chuckle because historically- It's 9-11, you go through, if you wear metal underwire in your bra, you go through security and you alarm it. So you have to get the wand. <laughs> and this was the first time ever. Historically, when we had flown, I've always just gone on through. And then I see Rebecca <laughs> getting felt up by the TSA guys. And I'm just like, and I'm, I'll make little faces and be a smart ass to her, but I'm we got sure a good chuckle out of uh, her not having to get a <laughs> secondary inspection. Uh, then we grabbed a bite to eat, took Lucy to a pet relief place in Newark Airport. It was like a janitor's closet with a drain that they put some of the artificial turf on and a plastic uh, fire hydrant and had a sink on the other side. And it would have been okay if they cleaned it more often and if there was some ventilation. Yeah, there. there was like no ventilation, so it was humid and stinky. And Lucy was like, uh uh. She I am not going into there. She was like walking on her toes. <laughs> like, get me off this crap. You expect me to go here? Like, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. But fortunately, she's a rock star of a little dog. She She'll go all, all night. night long without a potty break. And she's been doing that for months on end. Yep. 
and she obviously loves playing. So she fetch. feeds the hotel. My mom took her potty several times while we were loading the luggage. She, like you know, she pee peed two or three times around there, and then she held she it for like nine hours when we got here that morning. Yeah. Yeah. So made it to the gate. Um, after our meal, yeah. went on to the plane. We booked. Walked right on. So that it was a three-three-three plane, <clears throat> correct? Yep. In was. terms of the aisles. And we booked an aisle and a window seat in the theory of who the hell wants to sit in the middle. So that's, that's going right to eliminate a, a good amount of people searching for tickets. And a lot of people travel in pairs. Yes. So we figured if somebody does book that middle seat, we could just say, hey, would you like to have the window or the aisle so we could then sit together? But it worked in our favor. We got the whole row to ourselves. We did. Lucy uh, is a oh, rock star so in her travel bag. Like ever since we uh, adopted her in Mexico, we have just conditioned her to be in these bags. And this bag was off the chart. Yeah, slide out. Yeah, people. on both sides. Yeah. This side slides out too. And then it also yeah. folds out in the front. It's also a backpack. Yep. So I'll put it in our Amazon stuff. So. Yeah. And but she go. was great. She gave us kind of some wide eyes upon takeoff, like, what's going on here? I've and never she felt this yawning. before. And yeah, yawning, probably to pop her ears. And other than that, she was great. Not a peep, not a bark, not a whine, not a whimper, nothing. And we asked the stewardess if, when they turned out the lights, because it was an overnight flight, if she could come out and start saying, as long as nobody sees. <laughs> so we kind of snuck her out, put her on that little middle seat. She curled she up into a ball and, and you had a blankie her. and she had a blankie and happy she as slept can be. The whole night. I attached her leash to her and I hooked it to my chair. In case we fell asleep. In case we, because we were, you know how you do, you kind of drift in and out. <clears throat> and I was afraid if um, I fell asleep and she woke up, I didn't want her to go roaming around the airplane. <laughs> get zoomies in the airplane. Yeah. Um, but she slept the whole way and until the lights went up for, you know, they served coffee and yogurt and some biscotti. Yeah, the lights came on. Lucy went back in the bag. She was happy. We land in uh, Milano. Milano or Milpes. Mil I can't say that. Okay, right? the Milan International Airport. Airport. Uh, we go through immigration control and there's people. I guess they do a lot of self-immigration now. We yeah, just kind of. Put your the passport up onto a screen. They scan it. They scan there was a face. person there, kind of directing traffic. Are you EU? Are you American? You know, you, why isn't he said we have a dog? So, oh, come with me. We go. And there's this long line, <laughs> kind of the automated one. We go up to this other area, and it was kind of hilarious because it's like a fifty by fifty square to get up to the booth. And with rows, with rows, but you know, because they're used to handling more people, but they didn't take down the rows. So we literally had <laughs> about 20 times back and forth. And me being a smart ass is like, honey, I wonder if they saw us coming. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's nobody else in line. Yep. Here, so he did our passport stuff, and we he didn't said, We have a dog. dog. He's like, no, I don't no, care. I don't care. I'm like, okay, so where do we handle our dog stuff? Next step was uh, going through customs, and customs was also the airport was extremely empty. All things it being was. what they are, it was Nothing not a crowded like what you're used to airport. traveling. And there was uh, one carousel with luggage. I think our flight was, was like the only the one coming only in at the time. Uh, then there were like two guys <laughs> at a door uh, for customs, mm -hmm. and that was it. And we went to the nothing to the clear side, and they saw the dog. And he said, American or European? And I said, she's American. And he said, come with us. Come with me. <clears throat> so they took us over to the little customs office. And we had this packet of papers that they gave us at the um, veterinarian. Plus, I had copies of her rabies and her microchip and her other vaccines. And he wanted her rabies and her microchip and the USDA paperwork. And he took it in the office and he made copies. And the only thing he asked was, is she Mexican or American? <laughs> so Mexican American. I said, well, she was born in Mexico. We adopted her there, but she's lived in the United States since last spring. So she's American, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and so he's like, 
okay. So he comes back out, he hands us the paper. He's like, you go now. That was it. Yep. And when they let us out the front door, there was no check for our COVID. I mean, back up here a little bit. I uploaded our copies of our passports. Um, I did a, the EU passenger locator form and I uploaded copies of our negative COVID test to what was called the ready, the travel ready center for United. It's like an, um, part of their United app on your phone. And the lady at the airport in Baltimore, I mean, in Newark, she Newark. checked all of that stuff. When we got to Milan, nothing. There was evidence of where they had those um, COVID, Rapid COVID rap test lines. Yeah, well, they had COVID tested flights into Italy for quite a while this year. And there were places where people could stand and wait for those tests, but they were all closed down and there's nobody here. Nobody checking our tests, nobody making sure, I guess they rely on the airline that lets you come in to make sure you're safe to come here. And that, and the form that I filled out for the EU, it asked, how are you going to meet the requirements for COVID? Like you could choose that you've had COVID in the last six months and you had a negative test or that you're vaccinated and you had a negative test or that you're going to quarantine for five days and you had a negative test. Those were your choices. <clears throat> so we picked the appropriate choice for us and hi. Um, the Airbnb that we booked here, we booked a very modest. We did. Because, you know, the budget was tight. You know, Beck said that this whole deal cost us about $15,000, and we're doing it on a shoe string budget. Hey, uh, 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 okay. No, no. no noise. You gotta get down. There's people standing in front of our house talking. Um, uh, hey, no. we're on a live stream, Lucia. Quiet. Uh, so the Airbnb host was uh, kind enough to send their housekeeper to pick us up. And that was great because catching a taxi was not feasible because we're the opposite direction okay. from Milan. So the uh, taxi drivers, they like to be able to get a return fare to the airport. If they headed the 30 minutes to where we were, they'd have to drive back without a fare. Yeah. So we paid the uh, housekeeper 50 yeah. euros to... Uh, it was a half hour drive out yeah. there. She drove a half hour to the airport. So it was an hour out of her day. Yep, and we had a great conversation with her. She didn't speak a English. lick of English. And we don't speak Italian. <laughs> but between Rebecca's French and my Spanish. Spanish and her yeah. Italian, and we her, had a blast. <laughs> yeah, just talking about the similarities between the languages and the little tweaks of the uh, romantics. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, so, today it's Sunday and our truck, knock on wood, should be getting loaded and uh, it might even be loaded by think, now. Yeah, it was loading yesterday. But the, the ship, ship is, is supposed today. to sail today. Mm -hmm. And that's a big thing. So, getting Denny loaded on, I really wish I could have like set up a little camera, like mm -hmm. take a random picture every now and then, but I didn't want to leave a high dollar camera. Well, and you couldn't the, leave batteries on that truck anyway. Exactly, man, lithium batteries. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, that's where we are at. And we're going to stay here at this Airbnb until um, the day before the truck is due into Belgium. Because <clears throat> once it arrives in Belgium, assuming it's on time, uh, then it still has two or three days that it has to clear customs. Um, Lucia, stop it. And you don't have to be there in Europe for it. To, it's not like when we did the other side where Ben went in and did part of the process with them. On this side, they unload it, customs does their thing, and then they notify you that you can come pick your vehicle up. Um, so we figure we'll get there about two days after the truck arrives. But to get so, there. Yeah. Uh, so car rentals were, I and not exaggerating between two, you can say I shit you not. I shit you not. Two to four hundred dollars. I think we have mainly adults here. <laughs> I hope so. But I don't usually speak like that on these shows. Yeah, on these shows. <laughs> 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 Got a sailor's mouth right here. <clears throat> okay, stop it. Anyway, um, I don't usually I, or I'm sorry, um, two to four hundred dollars a day for car rentals, and then we still have to pay for a place to stay. Um 
we have a lot of stuff because there there were things that we couldn't leave in the truck, like all of the electronics and all of the batteries yeah. and Lucy's food. So we each had two, two checked two, bags. Yeah, we had a, our backpack that we always have, and then we each had a big red duffel full of stuff. So and Lucy counted as one of your carry-ons. It's just a lot of luggage. And then I had the camera bag to put and back on a train. And <clears throat> flying into Belgium right now is kind of challenging. Yeah. There's still a lot of COVID mandates, regulations, yeah. passport stuff. And we just thought since we're in the EU already, it's it would be easier, to, go easier to rent a camper van. Yeah. So we rented the camper van. Which was a <laughs> lot cheaper than a car rental. And we have a place to stay yep. and we can eat in there. So, so it was... 40, like win, win. 42 euros a day, and then I paid 20 euros a day to be able to have unlimited mileage because they only give you 100 kilometers a day, and we're going to drive 1,100 kilometers in four days. And then the insurance, I think, was 14 euros a day. So for less than 100 euros a day, we are getting ourselves and all of our junk. And, well, and the leftover food from here, yeah, which will be at least $100 because olive oil and balsamic vinegar, all that stuff adds up. And there will be bottles of water and wine. Yeah. And, yeah. And we may so, drink all the wine. There will be more, I'm sure. There will be more wine in the future. <laughs> uh, and then we pick up Danny, and uh, that chapter hasn't been written yet, so I have no idea what the hell is going to happen next. Nope. Nope, and <clears throat> we do have one complication to things like we probably would go to Morocco this winter if it weren't for mm -hmm. a new COVID restriction, not for us, but for Lucia. Um, the United States is not allowing dogs to come back in from high-risk rabies countries. Due um, to COVID. Due to COVID. They don't have enough planes going back out to take dogs away that don't qualify to come into America because of rabies. And so they just shut it down for everybody. Poor dogs with rabies vaccinations are now being excluded. Yeah. What's this world coming to? And it's not that we expect to go home in the next few months, but it is still COVID. And if somebody gets upset and decides everyone has to go back home to their country, or something happens and we need to go home for mm -hmm. like our mom or dad or something. A family member, we, we don't do not, want closed doors. We don't want the risk of having to leave Lucy here. <clears throat> and that is, so. we're dog people. Dog, our dogs are She's like our children. We will do anything for them. It is a lifelong commitment and leaving them Isn't for option. us having to leave this area because of a visa type of issue. Yeah. It, nah, it's not going to fly. So we're going to leave that door open so we can return to the States whenever we like. Yeah. I really had my heart set on going to Morocco. I want Turkey's to, also in that list. Yeah. And I'm really broken hearted about it. He's upset about Morocco. I'm disappointed about Turkey. Yeah, at least we've been hopefully to Turkey once already. It's temporary. Hope They say it's temporary. And so hopefully yeah. it won't be an issue by next winter and we can go. And I also have this um, bucket. Russia, Russia is on the list. And I also have this bucket list adventure thing that I'd like to drive our truck through Red Square. <laughs> How awesome would that be? I want to push the limits and do things that you never thought could be done. We still have time. Uh, yep. Because yeah. we are planning on being here for one, two, three years. Who knows? Those, like Until I said, those done. chapters of life have not been written yet. But Morocco just seems like an amazing place. And I to clarify why we would go to Morocco, in case you don't know, when oh, you yeah. come to Europe, for most people who are citizens of other countries, they have to, um, they are issued what's called a Schengen visa. Uh, Schengen district, Google it, and you'll find out which countries are part of the Schengen district. It is not the same as the countries who are part of the EU. Not necessarily, there's some uh, differentness. Yeah. But anyway, you have 90 days in the Schengen district, and then you have to go out 90 days but it's a rolling 180 yeah. days. Within a 180 day period that's constantly rolling. And if you stop into Switzerland, then those days don't count. But there's apps <sighs> that help you track it so you can put in the dates. But essentially it's Morocco, which I'm gonna owe, I've never been there, but I'm almost associating it as Baja to the United States. It's a completely different cultural experience in a warm climate to go during the winter. Yeah. So you can go to Morocco to get out of the Schengen. You can go to the UK and Ireland to get out of Schengen. 
and you can go down to the Balkans, and then there are some Romania. countries in Eastern Europe that are not part of the Schengen district. So basically, you just kind of pop in and out. Um, 90 days in, 90 days out. Six months in the UK, though. <laughs> yeah. So we are going to get to really enjoy the UK yep. and do like the North Coast 500 and hook up with all our friends and acquaintances there. Yeah. But anyway, that's why we're talking about like where we're going to spend time when we have to be out of the Schengen district. So um, do we have anything else or are we going to start answering questions? Um, I think we can start answering questions, but let me just grab the computer oh, yeah. and briefly just show you around where we're at. I hope I don't drop this thing and I'm going to try to make it not so shaky. So we position our table for this meeting and set it up on some cardboard boxes so we weren't looking down at the camera like this. This is kind of the living room. It's a fold away bed. Hey, this is like an efficiency place. We're on a budget. We're not shooting for luxury here. We're shooting for just accommodations. It was $43 a night. Take them. I guess there's eight. Yeah. Oh, yep. Hold up. Okay, so this is Terrace number one. The front of our place. I should probably not get too far away from the uh, hot spot, but we have a nice table out here. There's one bike. They're gonna bring down another one once we are uh, free to roam. And coming over back into the main living area, we have the kitchen. It is in like this narrow-ish hallway area. Uh, kind of like just Ikea grade stuff, mm -hmm. which is very adequate. We had uh, some raviolis for lunch and uh, some wine back here. Make sure watch my step. We have... There's rosemary back here. Yeah. Too, so it smells really good. Nice little it. area back here. Okay. Moving on through. Here is the bathroom. Very basic. A shower that is actually smaller than what we have in Denny. That's quite hilarious. The bedroom, make sure I'm not stepping on a dog here. Uh, some type of Ikea bed that's a little loose and I wish I had a screwdriver because I'd tighten, tighten it up or an Allen wrench. Um, a little cabinetry. closet. We've been, see over here where Rebecca is, we've been setting up the computer and enjoying some uh, DVDs. And because our charging station is down here. We have we have our converter, transformer thing, and 59 things plugged in. Yep. It. But that is pretty much it. <laughs> uh, there's a private park for the community that we are staying in. Uh, it's very nice on Lago Maggiore. And I got a high school friend uh, who's very Italian. And my best friend's family is from Lake Maggiore area. So it's really weird because we both have friends who your friend's name is actually yeah his majority. last name is majority <laughs> and i sent him you know a little text when we got here he's like i didn't know you had a lake here and he said oh yeah and then we responded, responded with i always knew you were connected <laughs> to the homeland <laughs> uh but that is it yeah let's, so let's now, answer questions yeah. If you've got more questions, now is the okay. time to ask him. I, I love seeing all the hellos. Yeah. That is great. From all of Guys the looking good. We feel good. We do. We're still in this stage of, is this really happening? And it doesn't I can't feel believe really we pulled this off. I think when we get past like the normal vacation period of 14 days and we don't have to go home, it'll start to sink in. But right now, it just kind of feels like, yeah, hey, we came to Europe and someday we're going to have to go home soon. And no, we're not. Yeah, we're not. <laughs> we have like no plans we at this time to return home. We're expats now. Expats with no 
no real home. We still have our Alaska it's residency. Home, but... Wow, the cyclone hitting Los Angeles. It's the whole West Coast. I was visiting wow. with a friend from That's Washington today. It was scary. Um, Intense. Was, uh, Hi from Tokyo. RJ. Love nice you, buddy. From Looking you. forward to uh, chatting with you this week. Uh, he's up late working on something yep. special. <laughs> uh, exciting news. Uh, we've partnered up with Mitsubishi Fuso uh, to make a series of videos about van life and overlanding in one of their trucks and Thailand. Article, articles and videos. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> yes. Some cold winter videos. Well, you ain't getting them from <laughs> us, at least this winter. We may shoot up north for a winter. Yeah, but you know what? We're going to try to do some Christmas markets. So there's going to be some kind so of cold weather stuff. About. We'll have no hesitations about going into the Alps mm -hmm. with our truck because we have four wheel drive and, and really well insulated. Really well insulated. Yeah. Ireland, yeah. New, York City. New York City, the Central Hi, Coast. Hi, Sue and Henry. Oh, hello, guys. Uh, Lizzie Lou, definitely the UK. Mm -hmm. New York. Lots of New Yorks. Lisbon. Yes. You're getting ahead of me. Sorry. Marty Baja. I love that place. <laughs> uh, yeah, lithium batteries. Greetings yeah. across the border. There's Matthew. Some yes, that. Both directions. We have not used it yet, but it's we're looking forward to the France and testing it out. <laughs> There. Uh, George, hello from Greece. That was oh. my first European travel destination. And the first 20, place couple of fights on that trip. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> when George, guys, oh, Nick, no. New Mexico. Missouri, Missouri, yes. Kentucky. Here. Planning a trip to Mexico. What should I expect leaving the U.S. and coming back to the U.S.? That's my birthday. It's not. I don't um, care if you have yeah. the yeah. it's, it's Question us um, down there. In April. In, at the end of April. Then we went down January. They didn't care. Yeah. They couldn't, it's either Mexico. direction couldn't Hold care. The, Europe a lot. Oh, yeah, well, you sure. know, yeah, actually we do. We will get thin sliced beef and in our checked bag, I got a big <laughs> thing of carne you asada. Carne oh, yeah. That one didn't get thrown away. Yes, no. <laughs> you gotta, you know, that and my Iranian saffron that I have left over from <laughs> Turkey. Yeah, I'm a, a food cooking guy and the you know, you, yeah. You gotta draw the line somewhere. Okay, let's see if y'all can explain uh, the worst things about. Well, so I oh. wanted to start building a house plan to move to Alaska. Well, that is a whole separate topic. Um, but thank I, you for watching those three videos. Yeah. Those have done we very built well. We did. Alaska. It's been about a year. We did <laughs> things uh, you need to know about Alaska, things we love, and things we hate about living in Alaska. And once we get settled on our feet here. We're gonna make a fun video why we don't live in Alaska anymore, even though we kind of still technically live there. We have our house there and uh, our residence, but that's a whole different video. Hayes is me, uh, so stay tuned for that. You know who you might watch um, to learn some stuff is Tiny Home Tours spent a couple of summers up there and he interviewed people who had built off-grid homes in Alaska. So check that out. And that might be a source of, I mean, they don't show them building it, but they do tours after they're built and they tell their story about how they built their houses. So they, he did a whole couple of summers up there. So that might help you out. Ciao, Tamara. <clears throat> Tony. Global Wait, public. there's a question. Uh, dealing with building the house. That's oh, kind of. We didn't build one. Yeah, so we bought our we house. We bought our house. Uh, but, it's just like building yeah. a house in the lower 48. It's that more expensive because yeah. it's the end of the supply chain. But really, unless you're going to build off grid and then you have to ship everything in, that can be a challenge. But Jay, thank you. I can't wait to start producing videos from <laughs> here. Uh, I hope to get the renovation videos uh, published starting yeah. next week, which is going to be the Dometic 12 volt rooftop air conditioner that we run off our solar and battery bank and don't necessarily have to be plugged in for if we're sitting in the sun. It's it's game changing. 
Uh, and then there's going to be the separate tiny toilet because we changed our toilet. We had a moldy, mushroomy mess in a ruined subfloor. So I'm going to make a video about the subfloor placement. Turns then, out our water tank in our truck was um, leaking not three venting years. properly. So it was, well, it was really cool more than that. Three years while we've had it. <clears throat> so it leaked and made a huge mess. Then a renovations as a whole video because there were a lot of other things that we did. And then a regrets and things we effed up. <laughs> and there's a few of them. Not all angles are 90 degrees. Just putting it out there. <laughs> we don't um, care. David, I mean, you're the truck. Okay. Well, we didn't build our truck. Uh, we are the third owners, uh, but oh, we did yeah. renovate it. So we are, we've been all up inside yeah, its business. To watch we're, all of the videos. We're far more familiar with it now. Hey, Matthew. <laughs> yeah, that seat layout is nice. I think Lucy and us would love business class or even one of those little pods. I can't wait to fly in a pod. Marsha, okay. Yeah, okay. apparently so, because that's what I- Thank you, Deepak. It's honestly really bothered me that they didn't check this when we got here. Yeah. Like we missed something and we're here illegally. They're gonna come bang on our door one of these days, but oh we uh, Matthew will hook you up with the name once we uh, get it and confirm it. Yeah, I've got to look it up. Oh, hey, where'd it go? It all reset down there. Um, Stand by, sorry. <coughs> San Diego, carne asada, Alaska, India. There we go, Deepak. Uh, let's see here. Train travel would be fun, definitely. Uh, it's just so, things are so much more complicated now. Yeah. And driving ourselves just seemed to work. And with and so much play. luggage, like the train is great if we just have our little backpacks. Osprey backpacks, but no. God, we have enough luggage for an army with us. Ooh, Pepo Deto, Das Ato East Tetra. Wow, we're gonna have to, you Hold can on. type that one in. I'll move on. <coughs> uh, Marsha, like Times Square. Yeah, we had to drive the truck through Times Square because we were there. And I kind of wish. Spanish or. I don't know. Italian. It's not Spanish. It's not at least Mexican Spanish. Um, I did kind of want to drive the truck through Washington, D.C., but we we're just so stretched that it just didn't work and get some really cool footage of that. Uh, Cappadocia, you know, some uh, somebody recommended, what was it? Um, for the dirt roads, that island off the west coast of Italy. Oh, uh, 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 Corsica. 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 I guess there's some really good off-road camping there that we're looking forward to. Uh, it's great to be in Europe. Yeah, it's great to be here. Uh, thank you for the offer. The outpouring of uh, love and offers. We can't has wait been to come great. visit you guys. We're so yep. excited to like to meet up in a different European. And countries. we'll be very respectful of anybody and everybody's That's COVID uh, situation because these are challenging times, and I think we all need to work together. Uh, and we're not going to exclude everything, anybody, and we're going to be very respectful. Hello from Canada. Car is Cliff. For your team handicap, you're a broadcast engineer. <clears throat> wow. That's amazing. 80, 80 countries. countries. That's amazing. Uh, K Bar, do we have a set route in mind? Not really, aside from bouncing in and out of Schengen, trying to avoid peak tourist seasons, because Benny don't like people and crowds and lines. And, you know, I like the shoulder seasons. Uh, there is really no set. Hi, Lucy. Honestly, we have so many places that we want to go that we're having a really hard time deciding what to do. I will say that I am desperate to go to Paris. Um, we talked about going through Paris when we're driving north um, with the rental van, but then I was like, well, I don't want to only spend one night. We only have four days to get up there. <clears throat> I used to go to Paris every year for my birthday from the time I was 18 until I was 25. It's my favorite place to go. I just love it. So I kind of want to go there. Um, and then after that, there you should see. So we've been, we have this Google, we have the Google Maps thing saved on our phone. And we have a saved um, 
a list of Europe places to visit. Let's see if I can show you guys. <laughs> back. Or not. Closer, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that's there a lot of pins. Go. Look at all those pins. So we really can't decide where to start. Don't know what to do. If you have suggestions, we're open to it. But honestly, we're just so like, we could go east, we could go west, we could go to Spain, we could go to Italy, we could go through the eastern countries. I mean, we're kind of heading for the Balkans because that's where we're going to go for our first we period. We think out we're going to go Schengen for our first restart. Yeah. It seems like the most reasonable, but there are so many ways we could get there. I don't know. We're just so overwhelmed. Where will you camp the first night after picking up Denny? Well, the boat arrives in Zabrugi. Mm -hmm. No tongue. Oh. <laughs> um, Zabrugi. And uh, there's some RV parks and campgrounds in the area. We'll probably post up there. Move back in, yep. just get settled. Joseph, what can I expect crossing the US-Mexico border? Well, kind of Super easy. the normal stuff that. for crossing it. Nothing it, there wasn't too any new. Issue at all. Uncle Mr. D, Cyprus, wow. I'd love to. Really uh, love to come there. <laughs> definitely love to get there. I can't wait oh, to no, see the whole thing reset again. scrolled away. Oh, no, you're okay. I saw the love from India, mm. so go back down. <clears throat> Hi from Florida. Cypress, Florida. Terry from Largo. from Largo, Florida. Let us know when you are in Germany and we'll look up. Definitely. Awesome. We'll we have a lot of friends in Germany. All well, that's a different Sue and Henry. I thought it was Sue and Henry from British Columbia. <laughs> okay. Well, now I'm excited to meet Sue and Henry from Germany. Thank you, Lee. We are so glad we finally made this happen. Baja carne asada. Well, I got that seasoning uh, in my carry-on. And I can whip it up with some citrus ju juices and garlic peppers. and peppers. And I could tortillas. going to have to make those by scratch, though. I bet you can find some but here. I could find a way. They eat Mexican food here, too, I'm sure. Uh, awesome that you're doing this. Wow. Thank you for following for yeah, the past three Trish, years. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, Maxine, thank you. <laughs> Cheryl, uh, how are you all going to manage your house back home? Well, we have friends that yeah, we have a good house, friend that's house sitting yeah. for us and checking on it regularly. Amazing yeah. neighbors that keep an eye on things. We have security cameras, and the neighbors are taking care of snow removal this yeah. winter and checking on it regularly. We have cameras inside and outside the house so with we can temperature warnings. So if the boiler yeah. ever goes out. <clears throat> And just truth be told, managing a house and traveling like with like we do has been one of our biggest challenges financially over the years. But we really valued, it was hard for us to get our house. We worked hard. We have a lot invested into it. And we like it's to leave to doors open. Market. Yeah, it was hard enough getting in now. But if we cashed out, it's going to be even harder five to ten back. years. And it really, in 2020, it was case in point. What happens if you need to go back home? Like a global pandemic, for example. Well, we had we a house to go to. Yeah. Yeah, that is how we're managing that. Yeah. Um, tech question, what is your suggestions on a freezer? You know, those new Dometic ones are amazing. They are. Uh, our truck has a Wabasso, <clears throat> Iso, well, it's Wabasso Isotherm or Isotemp. Uh, it's like a sailing one. Ours is a sailing boat. Boy. But it's not uh, like the ice chest ones that are very popular now. Ours has an external compressor connected by an umbilical, which is a funny story that we'll get into the F ups and in regrets the on the front. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Needless to say, there's a <laughs> hole in our truck that didn't need to be there. But we Stay now know tuned. how our refrigeration works and that it's a remote <laughs> compressor and it's not at the bottom of it. Maxine, thank you. Love the haircut. I've been growing I that out too. for, uh, shoo, gosh, Two 19 years. months or so. And uh, it's going to be donated to somebody fighting cancer so they can make a wig. So I feel really good about that. How many watts? Um, we have 520 watts of solar. And then we have three 100 amp hour lithium batteries from Battleborn. 
Yeah. Uh, how's the little one? Lucy is great. She so is sweet. a okay, baby. <laughs> she is a bundle of joy. <laughs> She's not sure what she wants right now. She doesn't want to be on the ground. She doesn't want to be held. I think she probably wants me to throw her ball, but she rolled it. She's got, she free feeds. She is one of those dogs and you just kind of put it in the bowl. She does what she needs. And just, we love this little puppy so much. She's, she's so just what we needed in our lives. Well, she's so happy, but then she's just also okay. so easy. Like the easiest puppy we've ever raised. Like and she had one accident at dad's. Mm -hmm. One accident at your mom's this spring. One accident at your mom's in Maryland. Oh, Which was kind of our fault, not hers. Yeah, and most of them, <laughs> half of them, really boiled down to us not picking up on our cues. She, If she comes and sticks her face in your face and starts licking you, that means she needs to go potty. <laughs> she peed on the bed down in Los Barriles once. And that was... Uh, that, I think the only time she's ever peed anywhere other than the floor. I'm going to touch she's wood on like that one. 10 or 12 accidents the whole time. Which is her. amazing for a puppy. Uh, but she's done Dodger. really well with the traveling. Like we've been staying at Ben's dad's, then staying at my mom's, then we were in an Airbnb in Mexico, and then we were in the truck, and then we were crossing the country, and then we moved into my mom's. Yeah. She just rolls now with it. Now we're here, and she's like, okay, now I live in this Airbnb, okay? <laughs> she's she doesn't care. dogs all over the place. She has her own little IG account, and if you haven't had a chance, check out her YouTube yeah. channel. I've had a lot of fun uh, making these videos. She's a little smart ass in them. Uh, <laughs> her channel is Aventuras de Lucy. Aventurous Adventures of Lucy. And it's right. day, like D-E, not D-E-S. Uh, hello from Cape Canaveral. Oh, well, fun. Uh, I can't wait to start sharing this stuff. Albania and Montenegro yep. are supposedly amazing. We're looking forward to the Balkans and, wait. yep, we're going to have to reset that Shenyang clock. Yep. Uh, Sue and Henry in Canada, lots of friends in Germany. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm a little confused. Okay, good. Uh, I'm glad it is. Shirley, hello. Thank you so very much. Sub Ramaya. I'm sorry. Uh, when are you guys going to visit Asia? Like visiting India? Oh, Definitely hands on the list. down. Like I wanted to do the rickshaw run ever since I discovered that there were travel vlogs on YouTube. And now we're even kind of opening up dialogue for the Mongol rally in 2023, which is where you buy a piece of junk car for about no more than 500 pounds British and British. has to be less than 1.2 liters, I believe. Mm -hmm. And you drive it from the UK to Mongolia yep. uh, and raise money for charity. Yep. Uh, okay. I would, I truthfully, I would sign us up for that now if we had the 700 pounds to spare to enter us into the yeah. 2023 20, race. He looked at the website the other day and he was going to go ahead and sign us up for 2023. And he's like, oh, it's 1700 or 700 pounds. And I was like, not today. Not today. <laughs> like we still have but, to pay for the shipping. When the yeah, once we have about eight, nine hundred dollars to spare, <laughs> we're going to get on the next Mongol rally, which is like a three week journey. It looks amazing. It would be really fun. Um, All right. Let's see. So, Kohoro family, what do you do for healthcare? We actually covered that earlier in this video. So, if yeah. you watch the it's whole thing, Cigna Global Health Insurance. But we talked about yeah. it earlier, and we have a whole video where we talk about how we chose our health insurance and. Um, uh, all the different ones we looked at and why we picked this one. Yep. Uh, enjoy your dinner, Matthew. We are looking forward to seeing you in a few days. Uh, yeah, next week. Matthew's our friend. He has a great YouTube channel. I think it's Matthew Tasker. Let's just confirm. Yeah. But he's got some amazing hacks for airline travel and he's done really wicked cool stuff. So I highly suggest checking, checking out. out. Matthew's channel. It he's, is he's good. He's from the UK. Yes. He lives in Nice, works as a videographer there. But we met each other at the Live the Adventure uh, meetup for Fun for Louie in Kernville, California. 
the winter that Shelby was sick when we spent. Oh, you bonked your head. <laughs> She's fine. Yeah, yeah. Matthew Tasker. Check <laughs> yeah. out his YouTube channel. He's got some great travel videos and hacks for making the most out of like the credit cards, the miles. Yeah. Well, it's all kinds of crazy places for, for like 20 team. bucks. Yeah. But um, but yeah, it's so cool to see full circle. We met three years ago in California. We haven't seen each other in person, but we've kept in touch yeah. all these years. And now we get to see him here in Europe. And it's just so exciting to be uh, at the point where we're finally doing that. We have lots of friends in Europe and oh, yeah. people that we can't wait to yeah. see here. And we're finally getting to do it. Get to hook up with Fabian and Isabella yeah. again. And, and Aiden and Halal. Yeah, friends, friends from Turkey. Turkey. Like, they live in Amsterdam now. It's going to be wonderful visiting everybody. Okay, last call. Any <laughs> questions? This video has gone on for an hour and 10 minutes. I'm so we glad. We still have a lot of people. Yeah, so glad you're enjoying it. <laughs> But uh, do, 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 do. Let's see if any Don't start new that ones song, I'm listen roll to in. in. My head. So awesome. Can't wait. Lucy Fun loves fact. this ball. Just tickets. throw it and she brings it back. Yes. He's going to take the train down and the plane back, and he paid for it with miles. Uh, do you Trish. have a way for people to donate to your adventure? So we have a PayPal account. Um, and then we also have a membership program for our channel on YouTube. So if you want to sign up to be a member on a monthly basis, then there's extra benefits. So you get to be part of our membership community. And depending on which level you pick, we offer some extra stuff. And we're really looking forward <laughs> to building that membership community further by just maybe randomly grabbing one of our phones and doing a live walk through Santa's Village or some random thing and just uh, more stuff for the community. Uh, but yeah, like the uh, Mongol rally is going to be a big one. I think 2023 is actually good because it would give us the summer of 2020 to be in the UK to prepare the vehicle because mm -hmm. you kind of deck it out and do some crazy fun stuff, but yet you got to do some practical stuff. You need a little bit of a workshop to uh, manage things. Yeah. And we know people who would probably have one. Exactly. We do. <laughs> but yeah, Trish, thank you so much for asking. Yeah, um, and I was trying to look up our name on it's something about vlog. It's something PayPal me. <clears throat> I bet it's here. My PayPal something. Well, we could add it yeah. to the thing. Yep, we'll do that later. Yeah. But um Thank you, Trish, so, for, yeah, thanks for the uh, thought. That really means a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, we look forward to doing like that Mongol rally and raising money for a handful of charities because you don't have to just pick one. No, you can pick one. Of yeah, them. and it just seems like a blast. It's like a win-win. Oh, there's traveling. Marsha, thank Yay. you so much. All right, well, that is a wrap. One hour and 11 minutes. I from, think that's the longest live we've yes, ever done. Um, stay tuned. There's renovation videos coming and then preparation and shipping out and then travel videos from Europe. What's traveling? What's with the, Oh, uh, we were talking about the Mongol rally. Yes. We might do the Mongol hey, rally from all over here. Over here. Mm. Hi, Bill. From the Outer Banks. Oh, I love that place. Love the Outer Banks. I could live there someday. I really still want to do, is it, I believe it's Cape Lookout. Catch that ferry yeah. to that island and you need four by four to drive. I still yeah. want to go up That's to the definitely, but it's a, um, okay, I know we're running on here, but <laughs> we still have left a lot of things in the U.S., Canada, and Mexico for when we get um, back. Yeah. And yeah, there's countless stuff like the Upper Peninsula. Uh, we'd like to do the whole Labrador, Newfoundland stuff. Thank and, you, Trish. Oh, Trish, you are so generous. That was awesome. Oh, my goodness. You guys you. are fabulous. Um, and then, like, mainland Mexico. Just so many things left in the United States. Yeah. And North Which America. is good, because we'll still want to travel yep. when we're done gallivanting or crossing. You know, we envision this as, you know, it's a drive around the world. <laughs> but... We would like to start off down in Argentina and just drive home to Alaska because it just All seems. All the way up to Pan Am. Yeah, you know, it just seems fitting. Yeah. All right. Thank, Thank you, you so very much. Hope everybody is doing well. Your families are doing well. And we look forward to sharing positive vibes with you. Bye, guys. Bye. Thanks for joining us.